At first glance, the Storm Tiger looks like a bloated Tiger I tank with an equally comical short barrel mounted on top. However, the self-propelled assault gun was an overwhelming fortification destroyer and a promising solution that would make the German Blitzkrieg even more terrifying. With armor plates as thick as 150 millimeters and shooting shells weighing over 800 pounds, the unstoppable behemoth was impervious to almost every conventional weapon on the battlefield. But its development was actively racing against the might of the Allied offensive throughout every front, and German engineers fought to deploy the motorized gun before it was too late. When it finally reached the battlefront, its capabilities proved astounding, taking three U.S. German tanks out of action and even raising entire building blocks to the ground. The Storm Tiger was ready to leave its mark on history. Self-Propelled Juggernaut Ever since their inception, Tanks were concocted as a way to strike heavily reinforced positions from a protected and mobile platform. The first time tanks were used in a major conflict, the U.S. showed the primitive Renault FT could achieve just that when they became vital in storming the fortified German positions across the saint Miel salient. But soon the war evolved, and tanks started encountering other tanks on the battlefield. Their primary function then shifted from engaging fortified positions to dealing with the enemy while providing cover to infantry fighters. With time, however, the original purpose of the tank would resurface as a specialized vehicle designed to obliterate even the most robust ramparts. The idea was simple. Take a large artillery gun and mount it into a heavy tank. Thus, odd yet devastating machines such as the Storm Tiger were born. As one of the prime examples of the self-propelled assault guns of World War II, the 65-ton metal beast was a unique contraption, attained by placing a colossal 380mm RW-61 rocket launcher into the chassis of a Tiger I battle tank. The result was a strange, almost comical-looking combat vehicle. However, its ability to deal damage was anything but humorous. Its main gun was initially designed as a naval depth charge launcher, modified to serve as a land artillery solution. The payload was launched via a two-stage rocket propellant system. The first smaller charge expelled the projectile a short distance, just enough to clear the barrel. After this, a more powerful solid fuel charge would detonate, sending the enormous 800-pound shell across distances up to four miles away. The result was a devastating solution that could penetrate even the most reinforced military fortifications used by the enemy. In fact, the projectile could pierce up to eight feet of reinforced concrete making it almost impossible for an enemy position to prevail after being struck by one of the Storm Tiger's devastating shells. At a price. The raw devastation caused by the Storm Tiger came at a considerable price, something that had to be accounted for in tactical assessments. For one, the motorized gun could only carry a maximum of 14 projectiles, which meant carrying one of the shells inside the breach. More often than not, the vehicles would go into battle equipped with only 13 rounds, and every shot had to be carefully planned beforehand to guarantee an adequate performance. The shell's size and weight also made the reloading extraordinarily cumbersome and slow. It required the concerted effort of all four crew members and a specialized crane mounted on the rear deck. The excruciating process took around 10 minutes at the hands of an experienced crew. As such, the gun had no way of firing one shot after another and most of the time, it would fire once, and then change position and tactics before firing again. The Storm Tiger also had to retreat after each shot because of the enormous risk of being spotted. The two-charge detonation left a significant trail of fire, smoke, and fumes, easily detectable from a long distance. Nevertheless, the problem was compounded by the way the Storm Tiger dealt with the gases released during the first combustion. As the first charge was triggered inside the barrel, the gases could not be released into the crew compartment as it would poison the vehicle's operators. Holding the fumes inside the barrel until it was clear was also not an option, as the pressure was massive and it could risk blowing up the entire short barrel. To solve the issue, the gun's barrel was fitted with a series of small perforations surrounding the central barrel opening. The gases expelled by the initial detonation were turned back inside the barrel and released through those smaller openings, ensuring the pressure inside the gun was never too great. Nevertheless, the sudden release of fumes on top of the second charge detonation made for a spectacular burst of light, fire, and smoke, 
making the firing Storm Tiger much more accessible to locate than other artillery solutions. Because of this, it became standard practice for the Storm Tiger's operators to move to a safer position after firing a shell. Thick protection. Despite its operating shortcomings, the Storm Tiger carried a tremendous firepower capability inside an extremely fortified armored vehicle. Like many tank hunter hull designs of the time, the Storm Tiger was manufactured with a casemate style exterior design with a sloping front glacis plate that would allow most enemy projectiles to be deflected on impact instead of penetrating the armor. But even if the projectile managed to pierce the inclined surface, it would be almost impossible to penetrate the 150 mm thick reinforced plates mounted on the front of the vehicle. This configuration significantly upgraded Tiger I's 100 mm frontal armor plate. In the rest of the vehicle, the armor thickness ranged from 60 to 100 mm, depending on the vulnerability of the vehicle's components being protected and the likelihood of an enemy attack striking that location. All in all, the Storm Tiger was a fortified behemoth it was mainly invulnerable to most enemy weapons from other artillery guns. Even the mighty T-34 Soviet battle tank and its 76 2mm gun could not pierce through the frontal armor plates of the self-propelled German mortar. And it would often take a lucky shot from the late-coming T-34-85 Soviet battle tank's upgraded 85mm main gun to stand a chance against the unyielding defenses of the Strom Tiger. If any infantry troops dared get close to the self-propelled gun, to plant explosives or sabotage the tracks. The crew inside the vehicle could also defend themselves with the help of the MG-34 machine gun mounted at the front of the unit. The crew consisted of the driver, the gunner, the loader, and the commander. The loader, who would not be required to load shells at all times, was also entrusted with the tasks of a radio man and the operator of the anti-infantry frontal machine gun. Proving its worth the Storm Tiger was designed as an offensive weapon, capable of moving as fast as other armored units while supporting infantry as they advanced into heavily built up enemy territories. The gun was built to destroy enemy fortifications, forcing them to rout into the muzzles of the assaulting infantry and panzer divisions. Nevertheless, by the time the Storm Tiger blasted into the scene during the last months of the war, Germany was not doing much attacking, instead fighting a defensive war on most fronts. A couple of prototype units were hastily rushed into the battlefront during the Warsaw Uprising of 1944, where the vehicle was an ideal solution to deal with the heavy enemy resistance hiding in dense urban areas and reinforced buildings. Although their numbers hindered any battle-defining actions, the prototype Storm Tiger was reported to perform more than adequately in supporting the German infantry as it fought off the Polish resistance. Numerous buildings in Warsaw had been raised to the ground, thanks to the overpowering firepower of the Storm Tiger, and the Polish fighter did not have the capacity to counter the heavily armored vehicle. After its crucial role in the Warsaw Uprising, the Storm Tiger would go on to see action in more significant numbers in the final of Wehrmacht efforts to defend Germany. The End of the War After being put into a position for which it had not been intended, the self-propelled gun was of little significance in the fight against the Allied rush to Berlin. As a defensive weapon, its cumbersome nature and low accuracy made it nearly useless. Even so, during the battle for the bridge at Remagen, German forces deployed seven Storm Tigers to help in the defensive efforts. However, when the time to blow up the bridge came, the Storm Tigers proved incapable of accomplishing their task, as their lousy accuracy prevented their guns from hitting the structure. Despite their failure, one of the units is credited with achieving an incredible feat during the fierce battle. According to German reports, a Storm Tiger operating near Durin allegedly hit a group of Sherman tanks stationed at a village with a 380mm round, destroying three of them with a single shot. The extraordinary feat is still highly debated, and it was never confirmed by the Allied authorities. However, there's no question the mighty Storm Tiger had the power and range needed to achieve such a formidable accomplishment. Ultimately, the weapon was an impressive concept that showed remarkable promise as a devastating mobile platform for offensive operations. Its limited combat experience showed that it had the potential to be a game-changer for the Wehrmacht, but it arrived too late. Thank you for watching Dark Docs. Don't hesitate to click on your screen and explore our other Dark Documentaries channels. 
where we delve into more intense battles and unique warfare technology. Also, hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content, which we publish regularly. Stay tuned.